Okay, ready to go? So we're in Perak Yutches, the 18th chapter. We gave a bit of a reduction last week. We explained a couple of things outside. Now we're going to do inside. So it's a bit of repetition, but it was a complicated concept. So review, I think, is in order. Plus there's some new things that come when we do the text. So just to remind everyone, so... Um, Perik Yudches, the 18th chapter, gives us a different avenue to access love for Hashem. Um, because, again, Tanya is based on the posseh that Yiddishkeit Torah is accessible to us, both in speech, action, and in the heart. Lavavcha, that was that word, the key word, Lavavcha, which is about love and fear of Hashem, which is crucial to really being a Benami because... That's what elevates our mitzvahs, that's what drives the Torah mitzvahs, the commitment, the consistency, and so on and so forth. So one way we had was full-blown love in the heart, the other way was, was intellectual love, that is really created in the mind. But now he's talking about something else called the Ava Mesuteris, the hidden love, the innate love, the innate amunah, and love that every yid has, right? Um, which, we, which he said is, is deep in the neshama, which we inherited from Abraham Avinu, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, the Alves, and the Moses, and so on. All right, so let's do it inside, and we'll cover some of the stuff we did. So it's page 46 in the, in the thing. It's a, in a small time here. You got it, Lisa? So we're going to start not from the beginning of the chapter. We did that about the Ha'inian. That's about, about just under half down. You know, see the, the, the dot there? Adele, you have it there? Yeah, yeah. If you, if you show me, I'll, I'll find a few. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I see. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, but anyway. Yes. They are Indian. So the concept is as follows. Ki ha'avais, first of all, the, f- the first principle is, ki ha'avais hein hein amr kova. That the forefathers were a chariot to Hashem, which means they're complete bittel, and they had this oneness with Hashem, which, which is um, a reference here really to the ten spheres of Atzillus, as we said last year, right? Remember we explained last week, Atzillus is the first world, but it's not really a world, it's Hashem's world, it's Hashem's midas, Hashem's chachma, Hashem's bina, and so on. Therefore, because they were a Makovah, Valkane Zohu, therefore they merited Lahamshit to bring down Nefesh Ruach Neshama, a Neshama soul made up of three conscious parts, which is called the Nefesh, the Ruach, and the Neshama. Leave Neem Acharem to their children after them, Ad Olam eternally, which comes from the Eser Spherus to Kedusha. It comes from the ten spheres of holiness. Right? Where are these ten spheres? We explained it last week at length. Shaba Arba Oilumis Abya. These ten spheres are in the four worlds of Atsilis, Bri, Yitzirasia. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning the four worlds is because not everyone's Neshama comes straight from Atsilis. In fact, very few Neshamas come right from Atsilis. They all originate in Atsilis, but and, and the core uh, source is Atsilis, but some Neshamas are from Bri, Yitzira, Asiya, and in Asiya itself, not lower levels, high levels, and so on. That's why it says, they, but they managed to bequeath, so to speak, all their descendants with a neshama. L'chol echad ve'echad k'fi madrigosa, each one according to their level, or k'fi myself, right? And according to the actions. So it all depends what kind of person we are. Now he says, well, I'll call upon you, but at least, but, but, but what's the bottom line? That I feel shabakal Even a person who's a, it's an expression, kal shabakal, which means like the, the lowest of the low kind of thing, like the first not too interested in Yiddish guy kind of thing, right? Poishe is told even sinners. Nimshach bezivugam, when they um, live with each other, which means they produce children, they're able to bring down an ashamna. Sometimes the behavior of the parents also has an effect. There's something he speaks about at the very beginning of Tanya. The behavior of the parents also affects the type of neshama they bring down to their, to their children. But even if they bring down a lower level neshama, right? It's still nefesh, the nefesh, 
He calls it nefesh the nefesh, the malchus the asiya. Shei madrega tachtoyne shvegdusha sa asiya. So that's the sense. The lowest level you can get is a neshama that comes, number one, from the world of asiya. Number two, from malchus of asiya. Number three, which part of the neshama is the dominant part, the lower part, called the nefesh. And not only that, it could be what we call in Kabbalah, nefesh the nefesh. In other words, each one nefesh, rach, neshama, comprises of the three nefesh, rach, neshama. It's like an intertwining, intertwining sort of thing. The lowest level would be a double thing, nefesh of nefesh, of malchus of asir. Right? That's the lowest level of the shama you can get. What's his point? Points like this. Yahobikei, nevertheless... Once the neshama comes from one of the spheres, the holy spheres, even if it's malchus of asiya, and even if it's only nefesh, the nefesh of malchus of asiya, he kulula mikulam, all the spheres are connected. Right. In other words, malchus of asiya is connected to gan mechachma de asiya shubesoicha. It's connected to the chachma of asiya, which is in it. Sorry. So the way it works like this, right? All the spheres are comprised of all ten. You know, we do in the, the spheres. So every now we say chesed of chesed, chesed of gvura, chesed of gvura, chesed. They all intertwine, right? So a malchus of asiya is connected to chachma of asiya. Chachma of asiya has in it malchus of of, of, of Yitzira, because, Malchus, it's, because the Malchus of Yitzira is what produces. In every world, the Malchus is the feminine energy that produces and gives birth to the next world. Now, Malchus of Asir itself, Malchus of Yitzira itself, has in it Chachma of Malchus, which that Chachma of Malchus goes back to the Chachma of, As- of Yitzira. And the whole thing keeps on repeating itself, right? Yeah, you with me? okay, Ma'achashim, sorry. Um, um, so you go back to the Malchus of Atsilis, which then you go back to the Chochmah of Atsilis. What's Chochmah of Atsilis? Chochmah of Atsilis is Shabbat Meir Oyrein Sov Baruch Hu Mamesh. Chochmah of Atsilis is that connecting level. It's part of Atsilis, but in it really shines the infinite light of Hashem. Right? Can we explain that? Should we do that again? So Chachma is that point, right? It's the point of... In other words... Sorry? Insertion. Insertion, yeah. <laughs> in other words, like this, that, that even at Silas, which is Hashem's world, so it's Hashem's spheres, nevertheless, they're still limited in, in some sense because Hashem chose to manifest himself in, in ten definitions, right? What's before at Silas, or as we know, as we know, call it sometimes, Lamaila Meseder Ishtashlis, higher than Meseder Ishtashlis, is Oyer and Sof, the, un- the infinite light of Hashem, right? Hashem in its purity, so it's in its purity, right? Undefinedness. That Oyer and Sof is revealed in Chochme, right? So just to explain a little bit, just like Chochme with us. Chochme with us, so Chochme is one of the powers of the soul. It's, con- it's considered one of the three intellectual powers of the soul. Yet, it's not much a tool of intellectualization because actually it's the tool that connects us to higher than what we're thinking. That's why it's the flash of truth. Right? My, my father-in-law used to repeat this concept, Exodus, that the difference in Chochmah and Bina is that with Chochmah, oh, how did, what was the wording? In Chochmah, the Seichel lives in you. In Bina, you, no, sorry. In Chachma, the Seichel grasps you. Bina, you grasp the Seichel. What does it mean? It means you're talking about an idea that's beyond you. Chachma right? means about a new idea, a new concept that's beyond you. Right? So Chachma is the idea of Bittu. In other words, Chachma is the idea that you, you didn't make up anything. Actually, you don't understand anything. What's been happening is that the, the concept that you're trying to work out, that flash, that truth, grabs you, comes into you. In other words, Chochmah is a level which is totally bottle to what's higher than it. You follow? Mm-hmm. So Chochmah is the idea that what's higher than Chochmah grabs it. That's why when you have, when you have Chochmah, you don't understand anything, yet that's the most certain. Right? If, if, I'm talking about now how Chochmah works in the Seichel. 
It's the most certain. In other words, it's that point that I, I got it. It's absolutely, I got it 100%. What do you get? I have no idea. I mean, I can't explain it. Because I don't understand it yet. It, it grasps me. I don't grasp it yet. Bina is when I turn it around. Bina is when I, I dilute the, the intensity a little bit. That's why sometimes that certainty goes away in Bina. But it's, I understand the concept now. Right? So Chochem Atzil is the same thing. Chochem Atzil is at one point where, in other words, like this, when you get to Bina and Das and Chesed and Gvurah Atzil, even though it's, if Atzil is, you can't say about the other spirits of Atzil that the Oren Sof shines there. It's completely revealed there. The infinity is revealed there because it's really a definition. Now it's true that the Zohar says that Hashem and His spheres are one and it's all part of Hashem and it's godliness etc. etc. But you can't say that's a revelation of the Orient Sof because it's somewhat defined already. Whereas Chochov is that connecting point. That's why Chochov is able to take it and bring it down later into the other things of Atzilis. But it's that connecting point where the Orient Sof is totally, in other words, it's the part of it. It's in Atzilis but it's still completely bottled to hide in Atzilis. Because it, it's where the Orient Sof is revealed in it. Yeah, so we're talking about how the, how the spirits work. So Kesser is something else. Kesser is what's is the is the above, what's above the spirits. So Kesser is already the um this Kesser is called the, the the in other words like this, that we, we know creation only starts from Bria, right? So what's what's Atzilis called? Atzilis is not called uh, a Bria, it's called like what's in Bria is even angels of Bria are called Nivra and they're called creations. Atzilis is something, nothing's called a creation, it's called a netzal. It's, it's, it's brought forth. So it's a, an existence that is brought forth. But Kesser is part of the ma'atzil, the one who brings it forth. Although Kesser is still a revelation of Orient Sof. If you want to get technical in Kabbalah, it's after the, the, the concept of Tzimtzum already, but still it's, it's the revelation of Orient Sof, the way it is. And atzilis, Kesser itself has two levels. So... So for now, I mean, this is a, this is a self concept. But, but generally speaking, the ten spheres are das. We, 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 we count das. Darizal counts das. Fanny follows the, the system of Darizal. And that's the Zohar? Mm, no, not necessarily. Everyone believes in the Zohar. The Zohar is written by Rashi and Mayachai. It's based on the Zohar. Of course, it's based on the Zohar. But, but post Zohar, there were other forms of Kabbalah, by the way. But um, in Tanya, it's very. Exodus Chabad in general. Also, is really, but this Chabad particularly, uh, there's no other Kabbalah besides Arizal. Arizal is the ultimate, final psak of, of Kabbalah. We have a tradition that uh, Leon, um, uh, Arizal was taught Kabbalah by Leon Novi. Shlomit Shikos Haram is the Arizal? No, that's the Maharal. Okay. Oh, so you're talking about the modern Hasidic sect, according to Nefzi Nostalgia. Maharal is pre pre Chassidus. Maharal is not. Moral is very interesting. A lot of Tanya is based on part of that moral. Um, in the beginning of Tanya, it says that Alter wrote Tanya, "Me peace svarim or soifrim." They're based on svarim or books and scholars. So we have a tradition, although it's generally all based on that result. But the svarim he talks about is the Maharal and the Shalom. Shalom was a big mechubul. The Maharal also was a big mechubul. Um, and uh, the Seifrim, the people he's talking about, is the Magid of Mizrich and the Balshamta. Right? That, that's the source of Tanya. But, but it's all ultimately based on the Kabbalah of Arizal. Maral was uh, not far after Arizal, actually. Yeah, Maral was just after Arizal. But Maral's style is not Kabbalah. Maral, his terminology is more philosophical. Although it's. There's a whole. I mean, this is another topic completely, but the whole system of learning this Kabbalah. And then there's this learning called Hakira. Hakira is Jewish philosophy, essentially. I mean, Torah philosophy, I'm talking about, right? What's Kabbalah? It's not philosophy. No, Kabbalah is not philosophy. Kabbalah is for character, for the country. Kabbalah is, is mysti mystical secrets that are handed down. In fact, it's, it's, Kabbalah, by definition, is actually transcends uh, the logic, logical rationale. So far, I don't understand. <laughs> no, no, but Tanya brings it down to understand. That was the whole Hiddush of Tanya. I took, I took the Pneumius of Torah, I took things that are the inner essence of Torah and brought it down to the human brain. You have to keep at it, and you have to, that's why it's so hard. But it's okay. That's, it, 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 it chips away, don't worry, it chips away. The more you learn, the more you understand. But I'm just confused myself while listening to this. Nefesh, uh, what's... Nefesh, Rosh is levels of the Neshama. Yeah. 
Okay, nefesh is the lowest level of Nashon. The Nashon has five names. Nefesh is Nashon Chai Yechida. Why would we talk about the No, no. So the nefesh originates in the ten spheres. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Let's see, the the origin of the neshama is somewhere in the ten spheres. Some people ten spheres of asiyah, other okay, etc. Now, we have different. Even the neshama has five levels. Each neshama has five levels: nefesh, ruach, neshama, chaya, and yichida. But in that, in that. Everyone's neshama is connected to one of those. We all have all five levels, but we all, but each neshama is connected to one of those five levels. Therefore, the lowest level of a neshama is nefesh, right? Which means a person can have a neshama that's ruled by nefesh. Which means his neshama is a lower level, right? And if you combine all the low levels together, if a person has a neshama that's nefesh, or even nefesh, the nefesh, as I said before, and its origin is the malchus of asiyah, so that's the lowest level of neshama you can get. In other words, there can be a Ruach Neshama that comes from Malchus of Asir. Right. Now, his point was that every Neshama connects all the way back, ultimately, to Chachma Vatsilis. What is Chachma Vatsilis? It's the place in the order of Ishtal in the order of the four worlds, where the Oren Sof is revealed. It's part of the order, it's already part of Vatsilis, but it's that part of Vatsilis that the Oren Sof is revealed in it. Because it's total bitl. It's part of it's just I, 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 the idea to explain the analogy of how Chachma works with us. Similar idea, in other words, it's the part of our Seichel that's connected to the higher Seichel. Same thing in Atzilis, it's the part of Atzilis which is connected to the higher or in self. So he's asking about Kesef. So Kesef is a complicated topic. Because sometimes when you look in some Kabbalistic charts, if you Google the Ten Spheres, mm-hmm. you'll get pictures of sometimes Das missing and Kesef. So there's a concept of Kesef that when Das is not counted, Kesef is counted. Because Das also has a very important power. Kitas like connects back to Kesser. It's not for now. I mean, but essentially, the difference, in other words, the whole order of Madragas is divided different ways in Hasidus, depending what you're talking about and where you're talking. For the purpose of this discussion, we have the four worlds. So above the four worlds is Ein Sof. Now, in Ein Sof itself, there are many, many levels. Some of those levels are post symptom which include Kesser. But that's another discussion. But while we're talking about, we're talking about what, where Exodus is based on. So this is, is based on, obviously, Pnimiya Sattar, which is more connected with Kabbalah, based on their results, Kabbalah. Maral is more language of Hakira, that's what we're saying, philosophy. Like more in looking, Rambam is more philosophical. However, these people are great with Kabbalim also. I mean, it's uh, interesting, interesting with Rambam. There's, um, uh, there's a big th- school of thought that believes that the Rambam didn't know any Kabbalah. We don't believe that. We believe that Rambam was a big Mokobu, but didn't write Kabbalah. So there's great concepts of Kabbalah in the Rambam. And the Rebbe brings a lot of proofs for that. Hey, separate, uh, separate discussion. Okay, there's a big thing to make the Rambam be rationalist. I, I, I don't subscribe to that. Yeah, he writes rational stuff, but he wasn't such a rationalist, as people make him out to be. Anyway, that's a big topic, controversial topic. Okay. So this is not, ra- I mean, Yiddish Kali is not a rational religion altogether. Really. So it, 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 it translates into rational. Of course, you can explain many things, but it's, uh, it's not, uh, it's most in the mood. Okay, back to the topic. So, every Neshama in the lowest Neshama dates back to Chacham Atzilis, right? Which in Chacham Atzilis, as he says, is Meir Oiren Soparachu. Chacham Atzilis is where the infinite light of Hashem shines. That Hashem founded creation with Chochma. And everything is made, we say in Davin every day, that Hashem, you made everything with Chochma. doesn't mean literally means you made everything with great wisdom. But we're saying over here, Kabbalistically, means everything you made ultimately dates back to Chochma. Right? So, in terms of the Neshama, now, with the rest of creation, also dates back to Chachma, of course, because as we said last week, everything is rooted in the Ten Spheres. But with the rest of creation, it's through a tremendous concealment, so it's not apparent at all. Right? Because for the rest of creation is Dibur, it's speech. Speech, by definition, is a to mechanism where you conceal what's behind the speech. But we, the Neshamas, come from Machshava, come from thought. The thought of Hashem is one with Hashem. Now, even in that, there's many levels, so you can have a Neshamah from Malchus of Malchus of, of Asir. But when it connects back to Chochmah of, of Atzilis, it means that ultimately every Neshama is connected to Chochmah of Atzilis. Right? And what, right? Which means, therefore, 
Ki ein sof baruch hu melubbish v'chin es koch b'shem nefesh adam, which means the infinite light of Hashem is enclosed, is embedded in the chachma of the neshama. Right? Yiyeh misha yiyeh mi Yisrael. Whoever the Jew is. So he introduces this concept of the chachma of the neshama. Different language than, than the Pintali, it's the same idea. In other words, the chachma of the neshama, yeah, there is a reason why he talks in this language, and I think the reason is because he's not even talking about the Pintali. The Pintali comes from a, a part of the neshama that's higher than, than everything. He's talking about the conscious part of it. The Pintali is not the, the conscious part of the neshama. But even in the consciousness of the neshama, we're able to access this love. Right? Through the mechanism of Chachma. Chachma is, is the part of the consciousness of the Neshama that is bottled, that it has a bitl to Hashem and a bitl to the infinite light of Hashem. Right? Uvachinas ha Chachma Shabbat and the Chachma, which is in the Neshama, here in Sabah Rachu. Hamalubish Ba, this Chachma of the soul, which is the part which is bottled and part which is, which is, uh, which is, which is, which is, has in it the, the infinite light of Hashem. Ultimately spreads into the entire neshama, to keep it alive. From its head to its foot, from the highest level to the low level, it's all in light and all it's all invigorated. It's all life forced by the chokhmah of the neshama. Right, as it says, as a pasuk, the chokhmah gives life. He adds in brackets an interesting thing, right? He says, this is even if it's a low neshama, and he mentioned before that sometimes low neshama is brought down by, by parents on a low level. However, he says, it's an interesting thing, that Actually, sometimes, this is just a side Kabbalistic comment, sometimes sinners can bring down very, very high levels of neshama. Okay, it's another thing. Otherwise, Sometimes they can bring down very, very lofty neshamas that had been trapped in the world of Klippa. There's this concept that some neshamas are trapped in the world of Klippa. God brought down this God to this, not us. Sorry? Hashem did this, not us. What do you mean? Bring down the neshamas. Now we do. Here. No, 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 no. Yeah, but Hashem sends down. There, there is a, a contribution that the parents have to make. What do you mean? We do. It says that behavior of parents affect the level of neshama that Hashem will send through. Uh, that's, uh, it's not for the topic now, but I'm just saying there is such a concept that, uh, I mean, it's from it's written. That's, uh, that's the whole thing of Kedusha, uh, bringing holiness into intimacy. It's one of the reasons, one of the ideas, right? Um, but, but, but sometimes there's, sometimes it doesn't quite work like it. Sometimes, Kabbalistically, there's been very high levels in the Shammas, which is a concept in Kabbalah in general, that there's a concept of very high in the Shammas that are sometimes trapped in the world of Klipper, right? That's why we find it's m- many things that are explained by that. So it's got to do also, by the way, it's got to do with other Mauritian. Other Mauritian had all 600,000 Nashamas attached to him, which were all affected negatively by the sin of the Eitz Adas, right? Um, and some of them fell off and were tra- tra- captured by Klippa. That's why that's the concept of a Ger, a true Ger, who corrects the converse properly. He's actually one of those Nashamas that has been dormant in the lives of non Jews because it's been captured by the world. It's also the idea that the Gemara tells us that actually it was certain mamish great Rishayim that either converted, became great Tzadikim, or they gave birth to children who out of them came very, very great people. Rochav, Rochav who married Yehoshua. Right? She was, a, according to many opinions, she was a prostitute. She converted, she did tshuva, she married Yehoshua, and out of her came like eight Nevim or something. Eight prophets came from her. Because she had them within her an amazing Hashanah, which was... Yeah, so sometimes there's all these different. Uh, I mean, that's a, that's not the point of the study now. I mean, this is, this is an interesting. By the way, Chassidus Chabad doesn't actually deal with these stuff mainly. That doesn't involve itself so much in, in, in how the shamas work and the levels and how they travel, how they journey. It's an interesting topic, but it's not really. In other words, Kabbalah deals with that much more. They say the Rizal deals with that a lot. There's a sefer called Sefer Gilgulim. They say for the journey of the souls and reincarnation of souls, fascinating stuff. Uh, Siddhas doesn't really do that. Siddhas is about the oneness of Hashem. Whatever the, in other words, Siddhas only takes from Kabbalah things that will help us understand the oneness of Hashem and how to serve Hashem better. That's, that's, on a, on a Pnimi Satur, on a, on a, in a way, right? That's the base. Okay. That's just a side point. Okay. So that's what, so, so what's the bottom line? 
every neshama, whatever the neshama is, has within the chachma of that neshama, the Oren Sof, because the chachma of that neshama will date back, will go back, connect back to the chachma of okay. so He says, what's chachma? He says, like, he gives what I said before. In our chachma, we call chachma the, the origin of intellect, the and understanding, but it's higher than Bina. That is explaining why Chochma, we use Chochma, the model of Chochma. Chochma, Bina, Shua, Vona, Sasecha, Vasagose. Bina is when you understand the concept. They are Chochma, the Maila, Mavona, Vasagose. But Chochma actually, by definition, is higher than understanding. That's why in a person's Chochma, even if we call it understanding, it's not really understanding, it's when a concept comes in that you don't understand. And you've got to then intellectualize it through Bina. Wumakal, and it's the source of the Chochma. That's why it's called Chochme, because Chochme, as we said before, is Koyach Ma. It's a power, but what is it? It's nothing. It's not actually a power. It's, not one, of the, it's one of the ten powers of the soul, but it's not really a power of the soul. A power of the soul means it's part of the consciousness of the soul. Right? Chochme is not really part of the consciousness. It's part of the list, but it's actually the source of consciousness. It's higher than consciousness. Shuma she'eno musugu muven is really... Chochmah really is a vehicle for what is not understood. The ain and nitpus ba sogadain, something that cannot be understood yet through understanding. The lochem is lavish bo erin soparachu. That's why Chochmah, Vatsilis particularly, but then it connects to all Chochmahs, is a vehicle for the infinite light of Hashem. The infinite light of Hashem is the revelation of Hashem that is completely transcendent, completely higher than any form of understanding. The less machshavot visa beklal, it's about when we apply the phrase of the Zayah that no thought can grasp it. Lochen kol Yisrael, therefore every Jew, even someone that hasn't learned anything, uses the phrase, not, it's not such a politically correct phrase, but it's the phrase used because women traditionally didn't learn. So he says, Afilu anoshim ve'ameores, in other words, even the people don't learn, which in those times was women and, and people who were ignorant and illiterate people and so on, right? But what he's framing out is even people who don't learn, hey, ma mini ma Hashem, they believe in God. It's a concept of a Munna. Munna lives in Chachma. Because actually a munna is higher than knowledge. That's what a munna is. The Tanya definition of munna anyways. Right? Some people, some people translate a munna as things you can prove. No, it's not a munna actually. A munna is believing in something you, don't, you can't prove. You don't, you, you don't understand. Right? So because we have this phrase, he says, Ki pesi yamin, it's a pasuk. Ki pesi yamin l'choldover v'orem yovin. A fool will believe everything. There's a Chazal that says, who is referred to when it says a fool will believe everything? It refers to Moshe Rabbeinu. Right? Yeah. was no fool, right? It means that he, he was, he was, he rose to the level of, he had, his level of Amunah was unbelievable. But really that spark of Amunah is in every year. So our inheritance of the connection, the love comes from Abraham, but our Amunah comes from worship, and inheritance comes from worship. No, no, it's not saying, it's just saying that that's, it's a, just asking. No, 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 no. I'm gonna, Moshe Rabbeinu says in Zohar was, was um, responsible for internalizing Amunah. You see, Amunah, right? I mean, if you ask about Moshe Rabbeinu, the, 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 Moshe Rabbeinu was called in Zohar Raya Mehem, a faithful shepherd, or like it's explained sometimes, not a faithful shepherd, but a shepherd of faith. Meaning, he's, right, there's two ways to translate Raya Mehem. The Rebbe brings it in the last Mimer, Zayn, uh, the, the um, Mimer of uh, Purim Katan, the one he gave out before, before he has stroke. Right, it's a long mimer, a very, very fundamental mimer. That's a mimer which you wonder. When we finish talking, we'll learn that mimer. Like Meaning he feeds faith. Right? So Moshe Rabbeinu feeds faith. What does that mean? It explains there that, you see, a munna by definition is transcendent. It means you believe something you don't understand. Therefore, it's actually not internal life. That's its problem, right? Because it's makif. It's all encompassing. And therefore, that's why we have this concept that you can, you can, um, you can, uh, you can be a gunner for Davin Stashem to be successful, right? But, 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 so therefore, Moshe Rabbeinu's job is to feed the faith that it should feed. Food means something you internalize, you ingest. Right? So, so, but the source of Amunah is not that. The source of Amunah is higher than, it's higher than, it's higher than, than safe, higher than consciousness. It's higher than understanding. That's what Amunah is. Moshe Rabbeinu helps us internalize the Amunah. Okay, something else, right? Uh, but it comes from the Ovois, of Ramitz of Yaakov, who gave us an Ashama, because they were a Merkava to, the spheres of Atzilus. They were covered to Chochmah of Atzilus. And therefore they were one with Chochmah of Atzilus and therefore what they gave to us was the same thing. 
gave us a piece of Atsilis, a piece of Chochmah of Atsilis, so to speak, right? If you can say it that way. And we just proved that every Yid essentially is connected to Chochmah of Atsilis, every Neshavah. What, what therefore the Orient Sof is revealed, what lives there in the Chochmah of the Nefesh, therefore? Amuna. Because in that Chochmah we have the revelation of Orient Sof. Our job now is to bring it down to Das and to Bina and everything. Okay, that's something else. But, right? But we all believe, we all have a Munaf. Why? Because we're all fools. Fools means we all, we all have that level of fools within us. Yeah? When it comes to Hashem, who transcends understanding of our Das, the less Machshava Tvisabay and no Machshava can grasp him, Klal Hakol Kepesibes Lisbarach. We're all like fools when it comes to Hashem. If we, we, we would only understand that, right? Relate to Hashem. He says a beautiful thing. He says, It's written in a Pasuk. said, I am a fool and I don't understand. Like animals, we were, I was with you. Then he says, I'm always with you. So David Amalek is saying, simply, he's, he's saying, I'm like a fool, I'm like an animal, but I'm with you. Right? St. Tanya gives a beautiful shot. He says, Kaloimar. What does this mean? It's not that I'm a fool and I'm still with you. I'm with you because I'm a fool. You know, right? Because I understand, I can go beyond my understanding. It's, it's being a good fool, in other words, right? You understand? Kaloimar, Shemazeshani, by the fact that I'm a fool, who behaves like an animal, I need Tom and Imoch. That's why I'm always like you. I'm, I'm always with you. You understand? This is something that's inherent in every Yid. It's the hidden love that every Yid has, which comes from the Amunah that every Yid has. Even a Kal Shabakal, even a very low level, even the, the whole thing. You all have it. It's in our DNA. He says, therefore, therefore we find that Afilu Kal Shabakal, Poisha Yisrael, we find in history even the lowest of the low and the sinners of the Jewish people, nevertheless, Moisrim Nafsham Lakadusha Sashem, they're ready to have a serious nefesh. When a push comes to Shav, and that Pintal Ayid is, is revealed, that Chochmah of the Nefesh is revealed, they give up their life. Allah Roy, the, the majority of the cases, the Soivlim Inuyim Koshim, and they're ready to tolerate torture, afflictions. Shaloy Lichbar Bashem Nacham, not to deny the oneness of God. The Afim and Burim or even they might be empty people, might be ignoramuses, the Ainam Yoyim Vashem, and they have no knowledge in the greatness of Hashem. It's all true. And the Gambi Ma'acha Yoyim, even a little bit maybe that they do know, a Mizboyin Lim Klal, they never really reflect on it or meditate on it and really internalize it. They knew it, yeah, they went to Shia once away. Yeah, they have knowledge, but Shvach. They haven't really spent their lives internalizing it. The Ain Moistrim Nafsham. Nachmas Dev is born of Hashem Klal. They definitely did not give up their life because they internally in, in, internalized this, this, this knowledge that they have about Hashem. No way. El Ablishum Das is bonus. They did it without any Das, without any meditation, without any reflection. Why do they do it? Rakiilu Hudover Shi Efsha Klal Lichpar Bashem Echad. They did it because it's impossible not to. They did it like as if they were doing something, it's just, we just need to do it. It just has to be done. Without any reason, without any claim, no, no, no discussion. Why? Behind the mission, because Shashem Echad, because this oneness of God, Meir Umechaye Kol Nefesh, shines and gives life to every neshama. Al Yedei Yislap Shusay, because this oneness of Hashem comes into the Pchinas Chochmah Shabbat, in the Chochmah of the neshama. Shehi Lemaylo Min Adas, which is higher than all Das. And all knowledge, which can be, which can be understood or, or grasped, right? I'm so sorry. Um, yeah. I, I think I missed how. How I don't know how many years old. Yeah, because every year there's the chachma, which is connected to chachma tzidus, right? What shines in the chachma? Or in sof? Because or in Sof, signs of the Chochba, that's where we get our Munah from. Or in Sof, which is higher than Yishtal, higher than grasping. It's what the Zohar says, less much Shavah, no, no thought can possibly grasp Hashem. That's because that's the Or in Sof we're talking about. Right? But that must 
be with us on another small group too, but blind faith comes from that, right? Yeah, no, blind faith is a very good thing, but, but, but. It's got, but, a, it's got a negative connotation. Yeah, sure. Right? But that's where mm-hmm. one mm-hmm. could. And it comes, this would be say, what, what's the part you're missing? You, you seem confused about something. So, the other he mentioned in the Chokhmah of Exodus, which is the vehicle for our himself. Right. We, we connect to that. We have it in us. We have it in us. In other words, just like the our himself is fully revealed and shines and is enclosed in Chokhmah of Exodus, which is why Chokhmah of Exodus is that connection between higher than Matzilus and the rest, right? Ultimately, we all have that same gilu, that same revelation in the Chochmah of our souls. And therefore, because we have that deep in our souls, that's why we are connected to Hashem. Therefore have Muna. That's where Muna comes from. Real Muna. Real Muna means belief that it's, that it's, that it's with a certainty. Right, because, okay. Because it's investigated. Yeah, because it's, it's actually is us. It's part of us. Right. So okay. it's, what, it's what we are. It's what we're connected to. It's, and that's where Mysterious Nefesh comes from. Right? Now, in the next chapter, he's going to explain a little bit more what it means. But also, we're going to do chapter 19. Then I'm just going to give you a bit of heads up here. Then we're going to come to chapter 20 and 21, which are very, very complicated chapters. Just uh, giving the heads up. But we'll take it slowly and we'll go through it. Because essentially, he's going to explain the bit of everything. You know, what is he doing in 20 and 21? Is a little bit what he does in the entire section, second section of Tanya, which is Shara Yichud Vayamuna, right? Which is, see, there's two parts of Tanya. There was two, two. I mean, in this in this book, there's five sections, but some three sections were added later. But the, when the Rav wrote Tanya, wrote it in two sections. Section, in fact, he was going to write the second section first, then he changed his mind and wrote the section. Section one is about the the, the, the struggle between the two Nashamas. That's much more about how we serve Hashem, how we overcome the struggles of Hashem. But, but in order to serve Hashem properly, in order to really reveal this chokhmah of Hashem properly, in our, in our, in our, we have to actually have the right belief system as well, which is that ultimately not, there's nothing else besides Hashem. The whole world is really bottled, it's completely bottled to, to, to Hashem, right? Which is going to be explained in depth in Chokhmah Chokhmah Aleph 20 and 21. Why is he going to do that? Because he's going to explain the whole concept of Avedo Zorah. Right? Because what's going to happen at the end is this, right? This is, this is the Malta is getting to over... He's going to explain it properly. We'll just give you a... Spoiler, as I say, right? See, this... So, you can ask the question, then what do we need to learn for? If, if, if... Right? Like, we just said that even an ignoramus can give up his life for Hashem without learning. Because we have a Muna. Yeah, that's true. The problem is that Amunah lives in Chachma and it's sparked when faced with a challenge. Right? Yeah, it's sparked when faced with a challenge. But what happened to that same person who had mysterious nefesh, but every other day of the week he doesn't have mysterious nefesh? It's called the sinner for, for a reason. So the sinner gives up his life for Hashem. Why? Because he has that Chachma of Hashem. So what happened yesterday? How come he ate trade yesterday? Or, or, or went against Hashem yesterday? Right? Or was unholy yesterday. The answer is because it wasn't sparked yesterday. He had every he has in him, but it's gotta be ignited. So it's ignited when faced with a challenge of Avid Azar. Right? What he can explain after nineteen explains more about this Chachma than the Shama, but he's gonna explain how how what Avid Azara really means. There's there's Avid Azara, proper Avid Azara. And then there's the Hasidus of Eidazara. Which is, any time we look at something that is separate from Hashem, it's really Eidazara. Subtly speaking, right? So once we know that we have the Chachma of our Nefesh, that we have that love already, it's not we have to create it, it's there. But once we know, when does it reveal itself? When does it ignite itself? When is it in full-blown working order when we face Eidazara? So if we would really come to the realization that every time we do something that's ungodly, that's of a desire, so they were able to bring that love every time. And that's the that's the, the formula that's in the answer. It's not letting you be passive because you've got the 
No, no, the country. The country. What he's trying to say is that the, the skills of every person is not such that we have the, not everyone has the ability to create. Love of Hashem and fear of Hashem is crucial to this whole bit many in the experience. Right? That's, that's become clear. That's why davening plays such an important part in Tanya and Exodus and so on and so forth. Which we still have to do. We have to, on some level, we have to do all of these things, by the way. Right? In order to get us on, on track. Later on in Tanya, he talks about other ideas as well, other mindsets that we can have that, that will always help us with me. But not everyone has the skill to develop a love on their own of Hashem, either emotionally, for sure not, but even intellectually. So therefore, this next part is about how we ignite and we relate to, give us a framework to understand how we're going to understand that we don't really need to create a new love. We can actually ignite the love that's already there. Not that that's easy work either, but it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thing that makes it more, more accessible. But it takes a lot of work because you've got to bring it down into all levels of consciousness. It doesn't, it's not going to... It's not enough that it lives, lives in the chokhmah of, of the nefesh. That's good enough for even the sinner to have a serious nefesh when he's faced with the Zorah, but that's not good enough not to overindulge or to do an Avera on the regular day. But that's what left in the Chochmah of the Nefesh, in the lowest part of our Mishach. In any part of Chochmah. That's the point. Yeah. The point is that any level of our Nefesh that is connected with the Chochmah of that level, that, that Chochmah level is connected to the high level of Chochmah, goes all the way back to Chochmah of Asiris. But it's before doing. So it can't stay there. It's got to be. It's got to ignite doing. It's got to ignite commitment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like the Yichida, the same sort of thing. But, but can, it, it, it lives in Chochmah. Yeah, because Chochmah, in, see, Chochmah, in this part, like I said, Chochmah in the third chapter was more as a tool of intellect. Now he's talking about a, a tool of a Muna. Chochmah serves that purpose also, that it's a vehicle for a Muna. Yes, then, and therefore, because, it's, because that's what Chochmah is, it's not really a Koyach, it's something that can connect to Chochmah Matzilis, which can carry within it an infinite idea. Infinite revelation. Is there a chart that we can look at next time? <laughs> sort of, yeah. No, because I'm a, I'm a visual, I'm a listener because this distracts me, but I'm getting, I'm confusing myself as we go along. Is there something we can. Yeah, I mean like the worlds and all that? Like well, yeah, and then where's the nefesh? And what, like, I'm not seeing it as a picture. I get it when you talk and then it's. Okay, I'll try to do that. Right out into the, and it's off somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> That's good. That's, that's a step. No, that's, that's a step. If you are not a civic, if, if you haven't studied the Tanya, but you say that you're very from, and you are, and you go to shul, and you put on, and you do everything that you should do, but you've never studied this, so you don't know really anything about this, then, then what is your past in, in, in Jewish? I ask you a question. What happened before Hasidus? I mean, right? No, so like this. There are lots of parts of Torah that will, will motivate a person to do Torah mitzvahs, right? No. And everyone has their own way and everyone has their own derech. But there's no question that Chassidus and particularly Chassidus Chabad was a revelation that came to us later and offers a deeper dimension. And, and, and without a question, that gives a person a perspective that you don't get with Chassidus. But that doesn't mean that you only serve Hashem with Chassidus, right? I mean... There are lots of from Jews, and there are lots of people that really are sincere about their service of Hashem, even the heaven of Chassidus. That's number one. Number two, what we find in our generation, if you look at Shur, if you hear Shurim and things like that, you'll find that Chassidus has infiltrated a lot. And uh, the lot has had a lot of impact. So often, it's not the words of Tanya necessarily, but there's, there's a lot of Hasidic ideas, whether from Chabad Chassidus or other Chassidus, that is, nowadays it's like if you listen to any, any popular Shur series on YouTube or anything like that, it's full of Chassidus. They were quoting the. Uh, to give you an, an idea, like there isn't one Magid Shev doesn't quote it in a, in a Shiva Shalom, for example. Right? The Slanami Rebbe, it's a very popular say for now, the Sfas Emes, or, or, um, or the one, you know, all these things are very, very, very popular now. Because that's, that's it, since Baal Shem came along and revealed this, this was a deeper dimension, and it made Yiddish Kar much more accessible. What was happening in the time of the Baal Shem Tov was, I mean, this is another whole idea of why. 
As soon as it was revealed, when it was revealed, there's many, many different angles and explanations for it. But there was a big crisis. There were, there were, there were you know, the Vashem Tov was along. There, there, there was a very spiritual, there were, you know, after the pogroms of Chimriski and all these people, there was a long, and they were still healing from Shabtai Tzvi, and it was like a very, very tough time when the Vashem Tov came along. Um, and there was a big divide between between um, the Torah scholars who were immersed in the world of Torah and therefore obviously were much more on the page than everyone else and the common Jew who were very simple and didn't really see a way for them to serve Hashem. Um, the Hashem to bridge that gap and the Hashem to show it how it's possible for every every year and reveal their moon that's there in every year and, and that's the whole concept, right? Uh, it's very hopeful. Yeah, it's hopeful but you know but, but what people should make the mistake they sometimes is made, and you'll see later on in Tanya that it's not, it's not true with Tanya at all. It, but it's not like, uh, oh, it's just being positive. It's not about that, actually. It's actually yeah, extremely it's demanding. Yeah, it's hopeful, very hopeful. Hopeful means every person has capacity to have hope. Yeah. Correct, correct, yeah. Easy enough, hope. Yeah, so it did, it did. It gave a whole new, a whole new, um, perspective number one on, on what it means to be connected to Hashem. It definitely gave a whole new perspective. We'll learn in chapter 20 and 21 about what does the word Hashem Echad mean. There was a, a story, I'm trying to remember who it was, it was a story of someone back in the day when the Hasidus first started. Uh, <laughs> there was a story of, a, of an opponent of Hasidus that his son went, left and went to the Mizrach of Magid or something. And uh, became a chassid. He came back after a while and said, um, his father asked him, okay, so what did you learn there? He said, I learned Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeim and Hashem Echad. He said, you're joking? So he called, them, he called the maidservant, you know, the, the, the helper in the house, the poor, I don't know, orphan, Jewess, or somebody that didn't know anything. He said, what's the foundation of Yiddish He said, Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeim and Hashem Echad. He said, she said, yeah, she says it, but I know it now. In other words, there is a depth of emunah, a depth of, of Hashem Echad, Hashem of, of that, that Tanya, that Chassidus offers, that is deeper than before Chassidus. And also there's, there's this concept of, of um, elevating the world, like the whole idea of what the purpose of creation is. There's a depth to serving Hashem and also a, an understanding, but, but also it's making it more accessible. If you, if you really learn Chassidus, you take it seriously. Number one, the hope, the belief that you can do it is more. The lack of despair is more. But also you push to work harder, which is, yeah. When we read it today, we gloss over our hands and hearts. But when it was written, that was probably you. You, of course. When it was written, most of the population were, 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 were ignorant. People in the shtetl uh, were, were, I mean, they were very devout Yidden. They used to come to Shul with Mincha Mariam and, and learn a little bit of Sip by Shiv, say a lot of Tilim. Right, and these were the simple Jews that Rabbi Shem Tov used to carry, but they were, they were very ignorant. Learning today is, 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 is hugely accessible. I mean, not only Hasidus wise, generally. We live in a blessed generation. We should have to take advantage, which we don't always do, but I mean, just also from, I mean, from a very practical point of view, I mean, you know, Gemara, you know how accessible it is today? I mean, with Ashkel and all these things, it's unbelievable. There's a danger of that also, by the way. Often people become lazy and just learn superficially and don't don't toil to connect to the depth of what they're learning. Everything has a price, but overall, it's amazing. No, so I'm saying, so understanding this concept, this idea that he's going to explain, this is definitely unique to Chassidus. This idea that that everything. Um, like nothing else besides Hashem and everything that we do is about connecting to, to, to Hashem because everything's really part of Hashem and if we do, if we connect to Klippas like Satla Vodazara, that's a really, that's a real typical Hasidist thing. That's, uh, you know, something else. And if we don't do it, it's disconnecting us from Hashem. All that, all that stuff. Anyway, we'll see as we go along. But, all right, we'll stop there. So is this the main book? Of Hasidist Chabad, it's, it's the foundation.